In this video I'm going to show you how to paint a death garden ring with contrast paints and some standard Games Workshop metallics. Now if this is your first time visiting the channel then please consider subscribing and if you do don't forget to hit the bell to get any further notifications of new videos when they arrive. Okay, let's make a start on the armour. So you can see I've already uh, done a little bit here as a bit of a test. So this is with uh, Militarum Green, which is contrast paint, uh, and that's just thrown uh, straight on. No thinning straight from the pot. So it's looking pretty good. So what I'll do for the tutorial is actually show you how to work around this power fist here. And then I'll go and finish the rest of it off camera. Okay, so it's Militarum Green straight from the pot no need to thin it down with any medium we're just going to apply it quite liberally to this fist so the instructions are to throw it on as thick as you can and let the capillary action do its thing so that's all well and good but let's just make sure that we're not letting anything pool too much so there's not that many flat areas on a death guard marine um, but you can see here where we've got the skulls. Uh, we just need to be a bit careful as we go around. And you can see it is starting to pool, you know, areas like this. So the capillary action will pull it away, but just give it a hand with your brush and just go in and kind of wick it away a little bit. Let the brush take up any additional bits and pieces. Be quite careful when you're going around the skulls. We are going to go back in and, and, and fill those bits later if we need to. Um, but the less mess you make now, the less cleanup you have to do, which just generally speeds up the, the whole process. Uh, if you do put a little bit too much on, then you can just move it around the model. And that's what's great about these contrast paints is you can just move it, not worry too much. You don't have to go in and correct any mistakes that you may have made uh, so you can see this is coming together quite quick um, I'm taking a bit of time obviously because I'm on camera if I wasn't on camera I could throw this in a lot faster and I'm sure you can too sat at home in the comfort of your own painting chair so you can see I'm just moving it around with the brush so be careful as we come to these horns because obviously we don't really want to have to throw a brush in there with a, a primer colour Quite happy with how quick this is coming together. So there's a, that's the power fist kind of pretty much done. There's a couple of bits inside the hand there. So we'll just let that settle a little bit and just check your way around the model. Like I said, make sure there's nothing pooling there. So I think we're looking pretty good. And I'll just do that shoulder pad as well, just to finish this one arm. Again, just be careful with this because you've got all that bone there. Don't worry about going over the trim because we're going to paint over that with a with a metallic later. And actually, that's not going to be too much of an issue. So you can see it's looking quite thick here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe my brush off in some tissue. And then I'm going to go back in and address the shoulder pad. And you can just see that actually we can use some of that excess paint that we've got pooling just to go up and work our way around tidying up these edges where the bone or or wood or I'm not really sure what that is but it's exploding through so let's take that away let's make sure we pull it away a little bit from the end so we don't get big pools of it because don't forget when this stands up that's running downhill and that's where the paint's going to want to go okay so that's the arm it's looking pretty good it's starting to dry now so I'll go away and finish the rest of it off camera we'll come back and we'll have a look at the the next stages to bring them back up to that wraith bone color should be pretty straightforward and hopefully if you take any time uh, this won't take you too long at all so you see it co covers pretty nice in there this bit might be a little more difficult as it's uh, 
quite a bit of detail, it's in quite close, but just take your time. Like I said, don't put too much paint on your brush uh, because you don't need it. So I've already kind of gone in and repaired around the mouth a little bit, and we'll we'll probably do the skin next, and then we'll start work on the tentacles in earnest. So like I say, work your way around any bits you find where you think, oh, do you know what? Spilt a bit. Go ahead and just clear it up. Um, we see there, so we're looking at this actually, and I'm thinking, is that a tentacle? Is it not a tentacle? And you know what? In the grand scheme of it, we can make that into a tentacle. So even if you have missed a little bit, don't worry too much. Okay, so there we are. I'm pretty happy with all the touch-ups on there, and we're going to move on to the skin colour next. Okay, so we've finished with the green. And I think this is looking really nice. It's gone into the recesses. It's just about dried. So what we're going to do now is just go in and clear up some of these tentacles and any bits I've accidentally spilt on. So this is going to be uh, Wraithbone from the pot. I'm not diluting it down. I'm just going to paint it straight on. Uh, it should cover pretty well, as you can see there. Yeah, it's not too bad. So just work your way on the model. Wherever you've kind of slipped out a little bit of green over the tentacles, just work it back over to bring them back up to that wraith bone colour should be pretty straightforward and hopefully if you take any time uh, this won't take you too long at all so you see it co covers pretty nice in there this bit might be a little more difficult as it's uh, quite a bit detailed in quite close but just take your time like I said don't put too much paint on your brush uh, because you don't need it so I've already kind of gone in and repaired around the mouth a little bit and we'll We'll probably do the skin next, and then we'll start work on the tentacles in earnest. So like I say, work your way around any bits you find where you think, oh, do you know what? Spilt a bit. Go ahead and just clear it up. Um, we see there. So we're looking at this actually, and I'm thinking, is that a tentacle? Is it not a tentacle? And do you know what? In the grand scheme of it, we can make that into a tentacle. So even if you have missed a little bit, don't worry too much. Okay, so there we are. I'm pretty happy with... All the touch-ups on there and we're going to move on to the skin color next all right next up we're going to have a little look at the skin so let's have a look at what we're going to be painting here so we've got the mouth bursting out of the chest stomach area so we're going to get the gums we've got the actual head of the marine himself so we're going to make sure we do that and then what i'm also going to do is i'm going to get all these tentacles so We'll get all the tentacles, we'll give them a coat of the skin colour, and the skin colour we're using is uh, Gulliman Flesh, which is, again, contrast paint. So we'll get that down, and then we'll work the tentacles into a, into a pinker colour on the ends. I'll show you how we'll do some blends using the contrast paints. But for right now, let's just get involved with the, uh, the flesh bits itself. So again, we're just going straight in uh, with Gulliman Flesh. Now, again, be careful you don't get this everywhere. Try not to get it over the green. Try not to get it over the teeth because that's just going to add more steps and in terms of getting things done quick. That's not going to benefit you too much at all. So again, you should just be able to run this over these areas. We'll probably do a little bit of blending with the flesh bits as well just to add some volume and make it look really, really good. Again, don't overload your brush because it's much harder to control. You can still use the contrast and get the effect of the contrast without going totally crazy in terms of the amount of paint you put on your brush. So there we are. So there's the gums. Just touch up any bits you've missed. And, and what you might find is as the contrast dries and that capillary action pulls it into different areas, you might just need to go back in and fix those. So that's the gums done there. Let's just work on the head. Now the head should be pretty more, a bit more straightforward. So you've got the... I guess wood or bone shooting out of his head there. There's no need to blend these because there is a cut uh, in the line there. So just take the skin up to there again. Careful not to get it onto the green. You see this has gone quite thick, but that's okay because what we'll do then is we'll go back over and we'll start to pull it out. Now, if you're worried about how much colour is going on, just wipe it off your brush, and there you can see you can pull it away. And it still leaves that nice shading in the recesses. The back of the head is a nice big open area that you can get into. So you can apply 
the Goldman flesh quite liberally. Now I've just noticed there's a little bit of wet uh, green paint in there, so I'm going to be real careful because what I don't want to do is draw that up into the face. So I'm getting a little bit keen, trying to go a little bit too quick, but that's okay. So make sure we've got all the bits of the face there. So that's looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off some of the paint and just pull away a little bit here because again the light is coming from the top so you don't want to stain the top of the head too much. And then we've got that join where the uh, bone comes out of the head so we can make sure that when we actually add the bone colour to it, it, it it'll kind of give us that definition. So I said as well I was going to do some of the tentacles. So let's spin the guy around. So we've got this big tentacle here. So we'll do that one first as an example and I'll just go and block in the rest and then we'll come back and we'll start to look at adding uh, some additional colours and shades uh, to the tentacle. So again we're just going to put the Gullman flesh on it straight from the pot, no thinning. And you can see straight away it's now starting to kind of pull itself into those recesses. What we want to do is just help it along a little bit so we don't want to stain it too much we just want to give that nice basic color on there and there we are we'll let that dry i'm going to complete the rest of the tentacles so we've got them there we've got some at the feet uh, we've got one hanging out the side there and then we'll come back in ready for the next stage now that the skin color has dried um it's come out really really nice i'm really really happy with that so Next up, I just want to add a little bit of uh, alternative colour on some of these tentacles and also just add some shading to the face because obviously he's a plague marine, you can see his face is all over the shop and, you know, swelling and bulbous. So we want to just get some volumes in there. We're going to use um, Volupus Pink for that. Now, Volupus Pink, contrast paint again, is really, really, really powerful. So what I've done is I've thinned it down with some contrast medium and I've thinned it down about four parts contrast medium to one part volupus pink um, and what's really key here is you don't have too much on your brush you can just see my brush there there's hardly any paint on it and what we're going to do we're just going to pop it into some of these bits and uh, where the gums get a bit closer to the to the armor because obviously they, they can be weeping they, they can be a bit more painful there just going to get some really small bits of volupus pink in there and just push it in with your brush this will add some really nice, uh, I forgive the, co the pun, but some really nice contrast to some of those skin bits on the miniature, uh, which just shows it's not just one tone, two tone, there's some sort of weeping wounds on there. So that's looking pretty good for the, the gaping maw. Let's have a little look at the, the facial areas now. So we can see what used to be probably his normal head shape, and we've got some additional areas here, we've got some boils in there. So we're just going to paint over those with the Volupus Pink mix and also up into there a little bit. We're going to put some Volupus Pink in here. And it looks like he's got a sort of tentacle type thing coming off his face. So we're just going to add some Volupus Pink there. Now again, same principle as before. If you think it's a bit too harsh, just wipe it off your brush and just pull it around a little bit. So you do keep that little bit of colour in there. We've got his tongue, so let's get that done. And then we can just have a little look around and have a look at his head and see where we think actually, you know, we've got some around there we can put a little bit maybe in there, just all linking up. And then we can see at the back there, he's really got this tentacle thing going on. So tap the camera with my brush just for some fun. So we're just going to put the Volupus Pink on there. And then as we rotate, we can see he's got some more boils. Let's get some Volupus Pink around there. There we are. So it just looks a little bit more sore around those boil areas. So we're really starting to add some good definition to the face there. Let's have a look at the tentacles. So we'll come back around to again to sort of some of the bigger ones on the back. Um, let's use that Volupus Pink and let's make the tentacles run out from a skin colour into kind of more a more of a pinky colour. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run this over. The gullum and flesh there. Don't worry about getting it on the gun because we're going to go back over that later. And again, we're just going to wipe our brush clean and then we're just going to pull 
this there until it blends in quite nicely with the gullum and flesh that we've already got on there and make sure you do it both sides as well so you see now it's got a more pinky hue to it and as that's drying let's just take a bit more veluqua's pink and just put that right on the end there so you can see it's really gonna pink up towards the end okay so i'm just going to show you how to do that one more time and we'll let's pick an easy to access one so let's pick this one here on the side of the leg so again towards the end we're just going to get the volupus pink there all over that tentacle we're going to wipe the volupus pink off the brush and then we're just going to push what we've got into the gullum of flesh and we'll soak up a little bit there so that'll give us a nice blend into the pink I probably pulled a mould line there, which has given me that bit of a, a shallow area where we've got uh, a bit of an uneven surface. So we're just going to fix that, and we're just going to pop some blue pink there underneath. And that'll start to look quite nice as well. Okay. So I'm just going to go around now, and I'm going to just finish off the rest of these uh, tentacles, just popping some blue pink uh, on the edge of them and then we'll be back once that's dried and we'll kind of have a little look and maybe we'll go in with a with another layer maybe we'll be happy we'll see again there's no right or wrong way it's just what looks good to you what looks good to your eye and we'll go from there okay once we finish the tentacles so let's give a quick spin round you might notice as well there's some white dots um, on these tentacles. So what I've done is I've taken the uh, wraith bone pot and I've just dotted over where there's lots of boils um, on the model. And I'm going to use a uh, plague bearer flesh contrast over them. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get some plague bearer flesh. And I'm going to put on this big area here because I'm going to be painting this metallic later anyway. And I'm just going to put it on. So you can see it's a real radioactive greeny yellow type colour, which looks looks really nice so we're going to put that on all the boils so this is a real simple process you just get some on your brush pop it on the boil there and then work your way around finding them make sure you pop on the tentacles there so this look again give you a really nice uh, differentiation in in the colors that you've got going on at your miniature you see you've got some in the back in there so again let's pop some contrast on Make sure you've got them all, work your way round. Uh, and then what we're going to do once we've finished that is I'm also going to use the plague bearer. So we've got some boils on there. Just going to colour them in. I'm also going to use the plague bearer for the eyes. And the reason I'm going to use plague bearer for the eyes is the eyes are quite bulging and menacing. So when this actually dries, you're just going to get that kind of dull, sickly colour. Uh, to the to the eyes and then we'll go in we'll just give them a quick black pupil and that should work really really well so what we're going to do now is we're going to move away from uh the contrast paints for a moment we're going to move on to metallics so the metallics we're going to use are um lead belcher and balthasar gold both from games workshop and i'm going to move on to uh, the wet palette uh, so we'll pick that up in the next section of the video First up, we're going to go in with the silver and we're going to paint all the kind of chainmail. We're going to paint these cables, we'll paint the sword, uh, and then we'll paint probably the vents on the backpack and parts of the plasma gun on the back there. So, this is lead belcher, it's not really thinned down that much. I'm just using it off the wet palette. And we're just going to get it in there. And we're going to be very careful when we come to the contrast because we don't want to have to go and repair any mistakes we get there okay so take your time when you get to those green areas or other areas of contrast like I am there and just work the paint in so with the chainmail take your time work it in gently make sure we get it all covered off there okay as you can see I've not actually got that much on my brush Kind of like an overbrushing type technique these parts when it comes to these uh, canisters we can paint the chains in lead belcher because what we'll eventually do is we'll paint them 
uh, in Balthazar gold as well. So same for the for the fly emblems really that they've got going on there. We'll do those in Balthazar gold. So we just want to get as much lead batter on there as we can uh, to make sure we've got it covered off. Make sure we do the chain mail just underneath the shoulder pad there. So I'm not too worried about this being overly reflective because we're going to use some uh, Nelne oil just to kill it back a little bit and take any shine and brightness off it because this is a Death Guard Marine remember need the plague bearers everything is filthy so we don't want it to be too clean so we'll go on to the sword and then we'll do the backpack vents and then we move on to the uh, Balthazar gold so when we're applying this onto the sword just take our time be quite liberal with it make sure it goes in there but make sure the coat is thin don't worry too much about hitting any uh, pus balls like this one here just make sure we get it into all the divots because what we're going to do is we're going to make this uh, plague knife into a really rusty disgusting uh, weapon with some of the technical paints so really we just want to get a nice base of lead belcher down you see I'm moving the model around I'm moving the handle around so that it makes it easier to reach and again when we get to these green bits just take your time work the lead belcher into the model don't slash it on smash it on just take your time and enjoy the process okay so i'm going to finish up these metallic bits now and then when we come back we'll uh, we'll move on to the balthazar gold silver's all done so now we're going to go in with the uh, balthazar gold so with the Balthazar Gold, again, I'm not thinning it down at a huge amount. I'm just not putting loads on my brush to paint. So we've probably got a few more areas we want to cover. So we've got the bigger areas, which are like the these parts here on the on the backpack. So we're, we're going to go ahead and block those in first. And then as we're blocking this in, what we've probably got to think about uh, actually is the trim on the armour. Now, these Marines... Are your marines so you can paint them however you want to you can follow the box art you can come up with your own design uh, it's entirely up to you on the box art there's a lot of trim uh, on the marine uh, and it's all done in this kind of dark grungy uh, gold type color so this is going on quite nicely again be real careful when you get to the bits you've already painted because you don't have to go back over them um, so let's get this uh, backpack exhaust finished and then we'll have a look at the trim before we kind of do the rest of it and then uh, I'll leave you to get on with it and then we'll come back and we'll give it a bit of a, a wash of none oil just to dull it all down and we'll see if we want to want to highlight it in the, the kind of the context of the model so you can see there's the first kind of backpack exhaust done make sure you've got all the bits you need to tip it upside down and get your, your brush under there take your time so the first bit of trim we're, we're kind of focus on is the shoulder pads. The shoulder pad trim should be uh, nice and straightforward. Again, be careful when you kind of get to the the transition between the gold and the and the green because you don't really want to be going back over that. And for the most part, you can kind of get your brush in there and get a nice cover without worrying too much about having another coat and going over it. So that's going on quite nicely there. Just take that trim. There we are. So that's the kind of the bottom trim done. Let's fill that in a little bit. Make sure that we're not clumping any paint anywhere. And then we've got the underneath of the trim as well. So if you have a look at the model, you can kind of get in there. Trying to get any gold on the on the silver but if you do it it's not the end of the world so don't beat yourself up on it and then let's just finish off the this trim on the shoulder pad and then we'll have a look at the trim on the armor uh, and when it comes to the trim on the armor i think you've got a decision you've got a choice as to whether or not you want to do that trim gold or you want to leave it as it is in the the militarum green we've already put all over it because it does look quite quite effective as it is doesn't it really um use the edge of your brush to just make sure you get the the tops of the pad in like that. Again, not too much paint on the brush, just work it round, work it round. The Balsar is an interesting colour. 
um, I find that it needs a really good shake before you start using it so if you haven't get some stainless steel ball bearings and you can put them in there they'll really agitate the paint and that's also the case for the contrast if you do buy some contrast you might find actually that there's some white discoloration of the pot and that's just the medium so you need to give it a good shake if you want to save your wrists and not get repetitive strain injury then get yourself some paint agitators so you can see this is starting to come together now. I'll go. And I'll paint the inside of the rim uh, off cam just to make it a bit easier. So let's talk about some of the uh, details on the armor. So the fly motif on the knee. So we're going to do that in in Balthazar. So again, this is really straightforward. Just pop the Balthazar on. Just follow the kind of design that's on there. It's a raised surface design, so you can just run the brush over the top of it just to hit all the bits that you know you need to hit take your time be careful because again you don't want to get any of it on the green that's already there so that's kind of like the the motif done so let's talk about the trim so we've got trim around the knee here and there we've got trim around the bottom we've got some trim around the the power fist we've got some trim around the, the kind of gaping more in the middle of the armour so it's entirely up to you whether you choose to paint that I'm going to paint it so I'll just kind of show you how I'm doing it so this is really simple just because paint on the brush and just move it gently along the edge of that plate and then rotate the model so you can get your brush in and get a little bit of that that green there so be really really careful Let's have a look at that again. So we'll do it on the, the bottom bit. So just pop your brush along the edge. Really simple, really straightforward way of getting the, the gold in there. But I can't emphasize enough, take your time. Take your time. Um, and then we've got these kind of decorative elements on the chain mail dropping down as well. So we'll get these colored in in the Balthazar gold. And then when we come back, uh, we'll get a null oil wash over it. Right, so we've got all the gold done. This is really starting to take some, some good shape now, I think. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pop some null oil on. And this is going to go over the uh, gold and the silver. And the same caveat applies with everything we've done. Just be real careful when we get to the uh, the bits that we've already used contrast paints on. We don't want to have to go and correct anything. So let's start off a nice big area first. So this kind of area in here. So again, just get the, the null oil in, work it into all that metal work and, and all the, the gold as well. Okay, and when you get to that kind of part, which is next to the green, just be real careful with your brush, okay? We don't want to spill any. This part is probably one of the more straightforward parts of this paint job. Uh, some difficult bits to touch into there. And just up in here to make sure that we've got uh, everything covered. So that's the kind of main part. We've got some chainmail here to do as well. Again, take your time. Be careful. Let's have a look at doing the sword as well. So with the sword, I'm not too bothered about any pooling. Uh, and I'll show you why when we actually come to finishing the sword later. So let's just get the null oil on there. Be real careful when we come to that hand. Let's get this bit done as well. Again, go back in once you've done this and just check that you haven't got any massively big pools of null oil. Because what they will do is they'll run down as it starts to dry and we don't want them running over and running over the hands. Okay, so some good progress there. Shoulder pads, pretty straightforward. So we've got some null oil on, just draw along the shoulder pad and what will happen is that null oil will just fall into the, the gaps. It'll also 
go around the rivets nicely and it'll really just dull down that metal so you don't have to worry about um, going around every rivet individually. Next up we've got the, the bit here so again same with the shoulder pad, we just draw the brush with the null oil just draw it over and it'll stay behind in those areas where it's meant to and really dull down the metal so all I'm doing is just really painting over the bits that we've done in the black, in the gold, sorry, and the silver. Make sure you're getting any bits of pipe work. So I've got a bit too much null oil on the brush there. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, it's a bit too much null oil on there. So what we'll do is we'll bring this round here and we'll pull it over this pipe because it's a big pipe. So we can take some of the null oil off. When it comes to the plasma gun on the back. I'm probably going to put quite a lot of null oil on here. Um, we are going to go in and make the gun case in black, give it a bit of a, you know, an orange glow. Albeit the gun is off, so it's not going to be a, a bright orange glow. Just be careful around these um, tentacles. Now you see, I've put too much on there, so I've just wiped my brush off. I'm just going to touch my brush into the null oil, and then that'll give it back. Uh, give back that Balthazar gold type look. So I'm going to go and finish the rest of the silver and then once we've done that we'll have a little look at doing uh, the black on the plasma gun and we're pretty much there. The only thing we've got left to do is some of the details uh, and the bone work. So I'll let you finish off your bit, I'll finish my bit off and we'll get back together shortly. The null oil is starting to dry now and got a really nice looking plague marine so the kind of big areas we've got left we've got this tube in the pipe in there we've got the bone and we've got the weapon so what i'm going to do is move on to some black now now this is just a bad and black from uh games workshop it's not really thinned down again i'm using a wet palette so it'll draw some moisture into it which will kind of naturally thin it down um if you've not got a wet palette just use a little bit of um a little bit of water but not too much uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to, i'll start with the piping here and this should be pretty straightforward. Now, it should go without saying that black is probably one of the hardest colours to paint over. So really take your time on this bit. Get it all into the pipe work. But don't get any of it anywhere else because it will be an absolute nightmare to try and repair. Okay, so that bit of piping is looking pretty good. Uh, let's have a look at the other side. Now you can't really see the piping on the other side, so that's good. So I might just give that a little bit more paint on top of there. And if you're, you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, you know what, I could do this. Or you're watching this video thinking, do you know, I need to get some more supplies. Then Goblin Gaming stocks all of the Games Workshop product line. Uh, and they get around 20% off as well. And I'll put a link in the description to that. Um, it is an affiliate link, so it does mean that I get a small kickback from Goblin Gaming, but it doesn't cost you anything. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel, please just uh, consider getting your next uh, purchase from Goblin. So we've got that done on the black. We've got this bit of casing on the gun as well, so we've got the handle. So that should be fairly straightforward to do. So let's get in there. Again, be real, real careful. Don't get it on the metal and don't get it on any of the tentacles. We've got a little bit there, which we just want to tap the paint into so we'll pull that down there and the last bit of black we've got to do here is the casing so I'll just work our way through that again not too much paint on the brush you see the wet palette has actually drawn moisture into the black so it's not actually covering in one coat which is good uh, because it means the paint is thin so it should flow off the brush quite nicely. Now I'm going to leave this bit here uh, with the wraith bone there. The reason I'm going to do that is because when it comes to putting the plasma glow on, I'm going to use some of the contrast paints. But I just wanted to have a little dull glow over the weapon itself as well. A little bit of object source lighting. Not you know, real object source like dinner, it'll just kind of give a nice kind of coloration to that part. So this is quite a fiddly bit, because like I said, we're dancing in and out of this bit of tentacle here. Uh, we're dancing in and out of the metal underneath. So again, 
can't emphasize enough, take your time. And there we are, I've made a mistake, but that's okay. I'm gonna clean the brush off. And we just got water on the brush. I'm gonna work, work away at that little bit of a mistake we've done there. So we've got most of it off, we've got a little bit left. So we're gonna to need to go back and correct that a little bit later. So I'll show you how to do that. Again, don't worry too much about mistakes, it's okay. Don't have to be perfect first time. So let's just try and finish off this weapon casing without any more dramas. Um, and then we'll go straight back in and correct that bit. So last bit of weapon casings here. Work our way around. Just into there as well. So on this side, I'm not sure if you can even see it on camera because I can barely see it with my eyes. You can just see the underside of the gun, so we're just going to go in there with a little bit. Again, take our time and just pull it back out to here so we can get this casing done. Okay, so it was relatively victim free. Just got that little bit of a mistake on the, uh, on the tentacle. So I'll need to go back in and correct that. I'll probably do that while I'm highlighting the tentacle as well. And you can also see there's a bit of a, a pustule or a boil there. So we'll, we'll come onto that and we'll get that all fixed in one, one hit. So I'm just going to go ahead and give another uh, coat on the black there just to make it sure it's a solid coat. And then we'll come back in. We'll highlight the black. We'll fix that tentacle. And then we'll get onto the bone work, which should hopefully then uh, finish the model for us. Okay. So we're going to paint the eyes at this point just to make sure that they all look okay. Now we're going to use the black. Now you're going to have to water this down a little bit. But you don't necessarily need a small brush. You just need a really good point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it in. So I've got a pretty decent point on my brush. And I'm just going to paint in the pupils of these eyes. And there, he looks nice, quite uh, deranged plague marine there full of disease so we'll go in we'll correct the tentacle on the back side we'll get the bone done and then this model is ready for the tabletop we'll have a look at basing him as well uh, and you base it the way that you've based the rest of your army to highlight this last bit of black I'm just going to use some Mechanica standard grey now let your tool do the work here so I'm going to use my brush I'm just going to use this nice long area here to show you just just run the brush along there and it kind of gives you that nice highlight same along there and around any other bits of black it's a real simple way of just getting a nice black uh, highlight done with a Mechanica standard grey you probably make do with that your black highlight maybe we'll run a one under this side here you can see how the brush just moves across leaves the paint in place it just makes your life so much easier okay so that's the black highlighted next up we're going to do the bone and for that we're going to use a shabdi bone we'll make that correction on the tentacle and we'll do some highlights on some of the other tentacles and then we'll come in and we'll get the the bone areas finished when we come back There's two things we're going to do with the Ashabdi bone. The first off is to paint all the bone areas. Um, so we've got these skulls on the power fist as an example. So again, this is a bit of Ashabdi bone, a tiny bit of water to thin it down. And because this is such a light uh, base on it with that wraith bone spray, we can cover these really, really easily, really nicely, really quickly. Again, be careful. You don't want to get your Ashabdi bone onto the green. Just take your time. So you can see this is covering really, really quickly, nice and easily. You don't have to worry too much about going and doing it two coats, okay? So we've got these skulls here. We've got this bit of bone here. We've got the bone coming out of the head. Um, I'm not going to worry so much about the teeth at the moment. 
Um, I'll have a think about what we can do with them, whether we do them bone or whether we do them uh, white. We've got those skulls there, but also I said we're going to fix that mistake on the back, on the tentacles. So what you'll notice when you look at the tentacles, you've got these ridges there. So those ridges essentially are going to be the, the highlight, highlighted parts, because they're the highest parts. So all we're going to do is we're going to take our brush, we're going to pull it back, and we're just going to draw some really thin white lines. And then we're just going to ease them off into that bit of tentacle. There's a bit of a pus boil there. We'll give that a colour bone. So you can see we've highlighted the tentacle. We've not quite fixed the mistake because black is showing us with the bone. But if we just go back over and give it another one, there we are. That's the mistake fixed. So that's a nice highlight on that tentacle. And we can look at doing those on, on other bits of tentacles as well. So we can look down here, for example. We can look at doing some... Straight lines, let's just highlight out into the tentacle. We've got this one in here, which is a little more awkward to get to. Um, so I'll show you on the back side before I finish it off off the cam. So we've got kind of got these bits there. Really easy to get those highlights in on, on some of these tentacles. So I'm going to go away and finish off the rest of the bone parts. And then when we come back, we'll just have the teeth and that bit of plasma on the gun to do as well, which is going to be really, really straightforward. And we'll see where we are, we'll see what the composition of the mini looks like, uh, we'll base him, and we're pretty much done. So I decided to do the teeth uh, bone as well. Now, in order to get um, a little bit of contrast on this, I've decided to use Wildwood, which is a contrast paint, but I've mixed it down with the, the medium. The, the contrast technical medium uh, in a, about a six to one ratio so there's a lot of medium in there this is this should be really really thin um so let's have a look how that works out so look at that that is absolutely perfect roll it into all the sort of last gaps and things like that and that's given some really really nice uh shading uh, onto these bone areas so i'm just going to work my way around uh, these skulls and if you put a little bit too much on like I've done there, again, simple, wipe your brush clean and just pull it back over that paint. And there we are, look at that. That is perfect. So we'll have a little look now on the big bone area here. Coming out of the shoulder pad as to what that looks like. I'll put a little bit more in there to get some more definition with this skull. Like that. So with big bone area, what we're going to do, we're just going to run the contrast over it like this. And then have a look at how it's settling on there. And we can decide if we want to take some away, put some more on, keep it in the camera with my uh, paintbrush. Not being very careful. So apologies for that. So let's have a little look at how this is looking. So that's looking okay. So let's maybe move some of this away from the, the higher points. Because they're obviously going to be the lightest because they're sharp. So now straight away that looks much better. That's looking really, really good for the shoulder. So let's try that on the horn or the bone. Not sure what it is coming out of his head. Uh, same principle that we just applied. So we're just going to dab it on there. Be real careful when you come through to the skin because we don't want any overspill on there. Uh, and again, that's giving it a nice bit of colour. Let's finish this bit there. That's looking pretty good. So again, real thin paint. We'll just take away some of that on the highest areas. So this is looking pretty good. We'll do the teeth. Uh, we can just wipe that in there. Again, be real careful when you kind of at that gum area. This is giving some really nice definition to the uh, to the teeth area. And we can go back in and, and highlight it back up later, and I probably will, because that will really make this model pop. And then the last bit of bone we've got to do is just uh, on the shoulder pad of the skulls, which are pretty much identical to how we did the ones on the power fist just now. Again, be careful not to get onto the green, work it in, and if you put too much on, just wipe your brush clean wick some of that away leaving the bone color there so that's worked out much better than i thought it was and the reason i've done this is because i 
I didn't buy the skeleton horde when it came out, so I just used these paints uh, to see what I could do with them. And actually, this is looking really, really good so far. So that, I would wager, is almost your basic plague marine done. So we'll keep an eye on some of this contrast. We might move that away a little bit. See, it's left a bit of a stain in there, so let's just reinforce that. The last thing we've got to do, really, is the um, plasma weapon on the back there. Now, I'm going to do this with a bit of a yellow glow. And that shaking sound you can hear is the ball bearings I've got inside my uh, contrast paints. As I very delicately open the pot one-handed, try not to spill it absolutely everywhere. Um, and this should be really straightforward and really easy. So it's just a bit of uh, a yand and yellow contrast. I'm just going to plonk it in there and work up, work it down so it covers all the coils. Now that's going to work itself back into the uh, recesses. It's going to leave a nice lighter area on top. And you can see it's just got a little bit of overspill onto the other areas, giving it a little bit of a, a dull glow. So that there, I would argue, is your basic... Plague Marine. So what we'll do is we'll leave that video here and you can come back in for future videos and we'll look at part two where we do some more uh, advanced techniques. We'll just highlight everything uh, and, and make that model really really pop that little bit more. And I'll show you how to do um, a rusty uh, plague blade as well. And there we have it. The miniature's finished. Just to tidy up the base, I put some Steel Legion drab around the rim and I use some Astro Granite debris on the base itself. I let this dry fully and then I just give it a generous wash of Agrath Earthshade. This really brought out some of the detail on the base itself. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please like it and leave a comment. If there's any painting videos you'd like to see in the future, please let me know down below and I'll see what I can do. I'm more than happy to do any painting tutorials that, that you guys out there might be interested in. And keep an eye out for part two of this video where we'll take the model to the next level. We'll make it really, really pop on the battlefield. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell notification, and of course, check out Goblin Gaming. Thanks so much for watching.